agent in charge. We have Richard D. Goss, who's the Internal Revenue Service Criminal Investigations Houston Field Office Special Agent in Charge. We have Jennifer Stevenson, Assistant Chief with the Austin Police Department. We have Todd Radford, the Chief of the Lakeway Police Department. We have Commander Brian Wukash of the Cedar Park Police Department. And also up here are Assistant United States Attorneys Mark Marshall and Robert Almonte, who are from my office. I'm going to reach around here. This and a number of the other items that are on this table are poison. Worse yet, many of the pills before you are camouflaged as legitimate and regulated prescription medication. When unsuspecting college kids and other drug users put these pills in their mouth, they are playing Russian roulette. They are gambling that the drug dealers did not place lethal doses of drugs like methamphetamine or fentanyl in these pills. Tragically, many times their gamble goes horribly wrong and they overdose and sometimes die. If they do survive, they risk becoming addicted to these highly toxic and life-destroying drugs. Just as an example, the long-term effects of meth on a human body and brain are nothing less than horrific. Imagine your college student taking what he or she thinks is prescription Adderall or Xanax and instead getting hooked on methamphetamine or fentanyl or some other dangerous opioid. This dangerous business must be stopped. Today we're here to announce the arrest and in federal indictment of 13 people, including current and former University of Texas students for allegedly distributing and selling, among other things, LSD, psilocybin, fentanyl, and methamphetamine pills to University of Texas students and others, both here and in San Antonio. The federal grand jury indictment unsealed today charges all 13 of these individuals with conspiracy to distribute, to distribute a controlled substance. Some of the defendants are also charged with money laundering. These charges are the culmination of Operation Spiderweb, which began in 2019 when federal, state, and local law enforcement officers noticed a disturbing increase in the, in the distribution of counterfeit controlled substances, specifically LSD, Adderall, Xanax, Oxycodone, and other pills in the Austin area. Law enforcement learned that thousands of dosage units of these counterfeit pills were being distributed in and around the West Campus area here in Austin and noticed a corresponding increase in overdose reporting. Make no mistake about it, these are not pills being carefully manufactured and tested by sophisticated pharmaceutical companies. In fact, two targets of this investigation overdosed and died during the course of the investigation. Investigators discovered that 23-year-old Varun Prasad of Austin was the leader of a distribution network that sold MDMA, LSD, psilocybin, which is also known as hallucinogenic mushrooms, counterfeit Adderall, counterfeit Xanax, and other drugs on a wholesale and retail basis. The counterfeit Adderall contained methamphetamine. The counterfeit Xanax and oxycodone contained fentanyl and other dangerous opioids. Law enforcement investigators also discovered that Prasad was laundering his drug proceeds with the assistance of a local real estate investor named Benny Danishu. The laundered funds were used to purchase real estate, which in turn was used by the drug trafficking organization for safe houses, stash houses, grow operations, and a hallucinogenic mushroom grow operation that spanned three different states. 
Search warrants were executed yesterday. They resulted in the seizure of hallucinogenic mushrooms, counterfeit Adderall, counterfeit Xanax, LSD, and other drugs. Authorities also seized over seized over hundred thousand dollars in cash, which is some of which is in front of you, firearms, and a number of ballistic vests. A sampling of these items are here in front of you today, but they represent a very small fraction of the dangerous drugs that were peddled in our community and a very small fraction of the illegal proceeds from drug trafficking. In fact, investigators estimate that the overall sales of the illegal drugs sold by this organization exceed $1 million. What is particularly disturbing about this case is the fact that what appear to be extremely well-educated and talented people who had many opportunities in life to choose from instead focus their business acumen and education on dealing illegal, dangerous, and counterfeit drugs. And they sold much of this often camouflage poison to our unsuspecting students and other individuals in our community. Today's indictment demonstrates that they went into the wrong business. Now they face between 10 years to life in federal prison. We are currently prosecuting a related case as well. In that case, investigators discovered that former University of Texas San Antonio professor Rose Rodriguez Rabin supplied Prasad with counterfeit Adderall laced with meth on numerous occasions. Her co-defendant, Brandon Sims, distributed counterfeit Adderall pills to UTSA students and others along with Rabin. These defendants used a consumer app similar to DoorDash to market and sell counterfeit and other illicit drugs. Ignoring the widespread sale and abuse of these substances is not the answer. We need to educate our communities about the dangers inherent in counterfeit drugs. People should know that when you buy a pill and take a pill from someone on the street, you have no idea what you are putting into your body and you can become addicted to a dangerous drug or worse, die from an overdose. It's important to remember that the charges described today are allegations. These defendants are presumed innocent until proven guilty in federal court. I want to thank the Austin Tactical Diversion Squad, whose work resulted in today's announcement. A task force which includes the DEA, IRS Criminal Investigations, FBI, the Austin Police Department, the Lakeway Police Department, the Cedar Park Police Department, the Texas National Guard, and the Travis County Sheriff's Office. I want to thank them for their tireless efforts to protect our community and bring these defendants to justice. I also want to express my appreciation to the individuals standing behind me today who are leaders in the law enforcement community and represent some of these agencies. Finally, I want to thank law enforcement in general. These days our police are too often vilified, defunded, and attacked. This case shows that without robust and effective law enforcement, our society is simply less safe. At this time, I'm going to turn the podium over to SAC Whipple from the DEA to say a few words. Thank you, U.S. Attorney Sofer. Um, my name is Steve Whipple. I'm the, the special agent in charge for DEA here at the Houston Division, which covers the Austin, Austin region. Um, yesterday's takedown is, is the product of a lot of hard work by uh, by the agencies that you see standing up here. Uh, this this case, uh, this investigation was started by the Austin Police Department by a detective uh, that, that brought this case to our tactical diversion squad and was the lead investigator for, for this uh, very complex uh, long-term investigation. So my hat's off to the Austin Police Department for bringing this case and for, for helping helping us pursue it to its to its full, fullest completion. Um, Mr. Silver talked about a lot of the issues that we saw in this case. It's it's an inter, it's a, it's it's a, a multi-state investigation. It's complex. Um, these kids, um, they're all 
well educated. Um, we saw eight current or former UT students that were uh, uh, members of this organization. Um, we saw mathematics majors, chemistry majors, a psychology major, business majors, um, and they decided to turn their talents into this illicit operation. Um, they were pretty sophisticated about how they did it. Um, they, they used social media. Uh, uh, GroupMe is a, is a real common uh, platform that they used uh, to arrange the sales of the, of the narcotics. Sales happened both on, on campus as well as off campus. Um, they used Venmo, um, Zelle, uh, PayPal, uh, other, other apps as well as cash for, for handling their cash. Um, we have a fairly complicated money laundering scheme. And so as you can see, there's a multitude of crimes that happened along the way in this investigation. And it's only because of our task force environment, having the FBI, having IRS, having Austin PD, Lakeway uh, it, uh, PD, having these components in our task force and the expertise and the resources that each of these departments bring enable us to do these kind of cases. Um, the point that we really would like people to take away from this investigation is when you send your kids to college and they think they're buying a prescription pill Adderall to get them through a finals exam chances are high chances are that it's not it's not Adderall it's methamphetamine uh, they're buying Xanax uh, they think um, it's it's manufactured to look like Xanax but it's going to be it's going to be fentanyl and parents are seeing their kids come home from college messed up and they, they don't understand why. The kids said, Mom, I took a, an Adderall. Turns out it was methamphetamine. It's highly addictive. Uh, fentanyl, highly deadly. Um, as Mr. Sofer mentioned, uh, we had two defendants die of overdose in the middle of this investigation who would be in jail today had they uh, not overdosed and died. Um, so our message is if you buy it on the street, it's not going to be pharmaceutical. This organization did sell some diverted pharmaceutical uh, uh, narcotics, but they couldn't get enough. And so they, they went to the manufacturing route, uh, like Professor Rabin and what she was providing. Uh, that was all methamphetamine uh, that were, it was pilled out uh, and, and with a, a clandestine pill press and put out on the street as, as Adderall. Um, interesting other part that we saw is, is a large amount of LSD and psilocybin. Uh, we, 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 we raided and are seizing a psilocybin grow and uh, processing facility uh, outside of Dripping Springs. It was quite a complex operation. We took about 33 kilos worth of uh, psilocybin uh, yesterday uh, and that was just a small piece. They had a uh, they had a ventilation problem and they lost about two thirds or three quarters of their crop, what we understand. And so they had to destroy a bunch right before uh, uh, we showed up. So this is, this is making it to our college campuses. It's not just here at UT or at UTSA. This is a problem that we see in every college campus across the nation. Um, and we're just asking that, that parents and students pay attention to what you do. Don't buy this stuff on the street because you're not buying what you think you are. Um, with that, I'm going to turn this over to Richard Goss, who's the uh, special agent in charge for the Internal Revenue Service. All right, thank you. I'd like to thank everybody here also, uh, and I thank all the work that the law enforcement partners have done in this. And uh, so, Good morning, everybody. My name is Rick Goss. I'm the special agent in charge for IRS Criminal Investigations Houston Division, um, which we cover Austin and all of Western Texas. Um, I'd like to start by saying that yesterday's arrests marked a serious victory in the Austin area and for the people that live there. I just wanted to take a second to explain IRS's mission, uh, IRS Criminal Investigations mission in the narcotics investigation arena. Um, so the role of IRS criminal investigation is simply to follow the money wherever it goes and to identify the ringleaders and facilitators of those organizations and to disrupt the illicit financial gains that are the lifeblood of those organizations. And our, our agents remain committed 
to our mission of dismantling narcotics trafficking organizations and, and putting the, the, those people that run those organizations in jail where they belong. And with that, I just want to turn it over to Chief Radford for a few more comments. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Todd Radford, Chief of Police of the City of Lakeway. I'm currently the president of the Central Texas Chiefs Association as well. I, I, wanna, I was honored to get the phone call to be able to come here today and represent local law enforcement, both the Austin Police Department, Cedar Park, Travis County Sheriff's Office, and obviously ourselves as we all have officers that are engaged in this uh, and other types of investigations like this. But to be part of this task force, to stand with our federal partners and our state partners, county and local partners, in a time when um, we challenge, we are challenged in law enforcement. If, if reform is necessary, I think this is a great example of what that looks like for us. We come together with one vision, one mission, and that's to take the bad guys off the street and to make our community safer. And I think this case shows exactly what that looks like. So I'm very proud and honored to represent not only the city of Lakeway, but local law enforcement as we stand along our federal partners to say to you today that this case is just one of a small number of cases that makes our community safer. Thank you and that you be blessed in your holiday season. I'll now turn it back over to the city uh, U.S. Attorney. So we have time for some questions. Anybody have a question? So we're not going to get into the details of all that now. Some of this is still under investigation. I'll just tell you that two of the people who likely would have been defendants in this case didn't make it that far because they overdosed on these kind of drugs. I'm going to turn that over to uh, Mark Marshall, who's the assistant United States attorney who's prosecuting the case. We ran warrants in West Campus in two separate locations. Uh, off campus, but in the 24th Street, 45th Street area uh, here in Austin. Another one down south a little bit. The psilocybin grow was out off of Circle Drive and Thomas Springs Road in the Oak Hill area. Uh, we ran another warrant in Portland, Oregon, where we got a full marijuana grow connected to this particular organization. That's where the warrants were primarily run. No, we did not run anything on campus. Most of the activity was the West Campus area. Some of the sales occurred on campus, uh, but none of the, the particular warrants were run on campus. I can't get into the specifics of the investigation at this point. A lot of that is still sealed. Well, the quantity up front, we had a pretty good idea. The first investigation and first enforcement action we took in 2019 involved 14 kilos of Aprazolam tablets. That's 22 pounds. That's a lot. So we had a good idea that we were engaged in that kind of organization. The psilocybin grow surprised me. It's the biggest grow I've seen. All the psilocybin came from these guys and the grow. As, as the U.S. Attorney indicated, Rose Rabin was arrested in San Antonio. She was one of the suppliers producing Adderall tablets. That's all public record. I think they ran stories on that down in San Antonio. Uh, that involved about 21 kilos of meth and and tablets. Uh, the rest of it is still part of an ongoing investigation and I cannot comment on that. Austin Police Department got information on one of the targets and that's how it started back in 2019. Uh, I can't comment on that specific activity. There was an enforcement action that involved a search warrant and that's where we got the initial 14 kilos of Adderall. Well, two guys died. Uh, I'm not sure of their connection with UT right now, and I couldn't comment on it anyway. Uh, some of the people we're talking about 
may be witnesses, and I can't identify them at this point. No. Within the last six months. Yes, they were all engaged in activity in those particular areas, and we were doing activities out there. But I can't comment on those specific activities. A lot of it is still sealed. I don't have the specific numbers, but if you go back to March of 2020, I think the uh, Williamson County Medical Examiner, among others, had a press conference and talked about their observation of increased overdoses in and around the Austin area, including Williamson and Travis counties. Some were, some weren't. You're absolutely correct, um, and that's the whole marketing ploy uh, with these what we call counterfeit pharmaceuticals. Uh, people think they're taking medicine, something that a doctor has prescribed, that a pharmaceutical manufacturer has made and a pharmacist has dispensed. This, none of this is that. This has been, was, has been made in somebody's garage with a, a clandestine pill press and with inexact uh, measurements. That's why you'll see somebody take take a, uh, what they think is a, a Xanax and overdose and die because it's, it's fentanyl or maybe even worse car fentanyl. But it's being marketed to these people, to kids, to anybody who's going to buy it on the street as a pharmaceutical. Um, our, our Office of Diversion expends a great deal of resources to try to control uh, the diversion of legitimate pharmaceuticals. It's a closed system. We're supposed to be able to track a pill from when it's manufactured to, to, to when it's been dispensed to a, a patient. Um, so we expend a lot of effort in preventing that diversion outside of that closed circle. Um, and as a result, we see, we see this kind of happen, where it's clandestinely manufactured and marketed as legitimate pharmaceuticals. Um, actually, yes to both. Um, it, it leaves a trail, and um, it does complicate things. I mean, any steps that you take to thwart being found out to do something complicates our job. Uh, it makes us get smarter about uh, the applications and, and, and how to work them. Um, it, it, is, it is a tool of efficiency uh, for like this organization and using GroupMe and, and, and Zelle and these other, uh, other apps um, it's a lot safer to get, you know, sell me your money versus hand me, you know, 200 bucks and I got it in my pocket and I get hit on the head and be, and be robbed. So there's, it, there's efficiencies for them, efficiencies for us, as well as complications for us. Um, I'm, I have to take, I haven't taken a look at those, which ones they are. Candy. Oh, those are the can. Well, the THC edibles, uh, THC edibles. Yeah. It, it was almost like a drugstore, you know, all kinds of different. I mean, we we saw actual cocaine, we saw actual meth. Uh, the the vast majority of what's being sold though is are, are the pharmaceuticals, and then and they had recently moved into the, into the LSD and the and the psilocybin. Uh, because of you know some overdose deaths and things like that, I, I I use that term. It's like a it's like a storefront. It's like a drugstore. They had all kinds of stuff for sale. Well, there there were multiple locations. Um, you know everything from the uh, you know, like the apartments uh, 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 that where they lived. They they sold out of. They stashed as well. 
uh, the, the operation down in uh, uh, the psilocybin grow and manufacturing, uh, they, 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 there was a lot of science in that. And there was a lot of uh, effort and thought and money invested into that process. And because it, you have to really control the environment because if you get outside spores or, or whatever, it can kill the, uh, the grow. I mean, so there's, it was pretty complicated. Now, a lot of them, what they lived in, is pretty nasty, you know. But, uh, but, the, but that particular manufacturing facility for, for, the, for the mushrooms, uh, they, they had to control the environment. Uh, temperature, I think we can take one everything. more question. So, um, yes, there's more to do here. There's more to do in San Antonio, Houston, all, all of our college campuses. Yes. Um, uh, and that's why we're hoping this message resonates at home with parents, with students, um, and we, we're going to continue these investigations. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it.